Welcome to Composer Scape, episode 17. 17. Wow. Uh, yeah, we're get, we're get, we're on a roll. Um, you know, they haven't canceled us yet. No. <laughs> on lawn mowing days, we kind of want to cancel ourselves. It's like, yeah, we'll record right after we mow the lawn. And then we're like, I'm going to sit on my couch and play video games all day, which we can talk about that. <laughs> so this is a, I'm not even going to predict what we're going to get to because this is just going to be a, a open season. So many things have been happening, both mm. the main thing, I think the, uh, the story arc of this episode is Marvel Disney gives quality goods to their consumers. They give the fans what they want and they make it great. Yes. Warner Brothers <laughs> gave the fans what they wanted, kind of. Uh, it turns out that even though it was supposed to be Zack's vision, they wouldn't even let him put the damn Green Lantern in it. Yeah. And despite the intense number of views it's probably getting, which HBO Max or Warner Media refuses to release the actual numbers, but apparently in China it did... This is five days now, 250 million views. Wow. wow. Yeah, that beat the Avengers Endgame on that wow. same service. And it just released in China. So, I mean, Zach's movies have always done great there. Huh. But um, still, it's a call to sack, supposedly. As people have been saying, <laughs> a call to Zach. Oof. But, uh, uh -huh. and there will be no more. They swear up and down. It's it's getting a little rough. There was a rumor when it going around for like a whole minute in internet time that Henry Cavill had unfollowed Warner Brothers on Instagram. He's only on Instagram. Um, but then apparently some people more in the know were like, Henry Cavill never followed Warner Brothers or any of that stuff. No. Um, <clears throat> so as far as we know, the, as he said, the cape is still in the closet. But we'll get to all that. We got a lot. And the big thing, you know, let's start on the positive note. And then we will mm -hmm. go into well, briefly I, this I, Warner Brothers thing. Because they still got good things on the horizon. But it's hard to get excited for, you know, the Flash. I mean, what's the the Flash was supposed to be the Flash and Cyborg. And now they won't even, all Ray Fisher said was apologize and I'll be in the Flash. <laughs> so let's start with the positive. Um, yeah. I've got one too. You go first. Oh, mine's a big one, so you go first. Well, the release date for Loki got bumped up. We, we're getting it a week early. Yeah. I believe that's it. Yeah. Sweet. Um, can't so that's wait June for that. 9, and they didn't want to put... This is an interesting combo. They apparently didn't want to put Loki... They could have bumped it further, but I'm betting they didn't want to put Loki within too many weeks within army of the dead. Cause that's going to probably be a pretty big streaming hit and it's going to be a yeah. similar fan base. Right. So yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. June it was 9th, a bit of a right? long gap because it was like WandaVision ended. And then what did we have like a week off before we got um, Falcon and two the weeks. winter soldier? I two weeks. Two. Yeah. So I we got think, a little bit of a yeah. break here. Right. Well, it's four weeks, right? So um, for, we'll, we'll do um, some episodes where we'll do some book club stuff and talk about some comics, talk about um, some of the scuttlebutt uh, around the hero verse. And then mm -hmm. we can um, we'll, we'll go back to kind of our weekly blow by blow of of uh, Marvel streaming. Yeah. So that was my good news. Right. You, you, you go. Yeah, th we, we both know this one. So. And a surprise, at least it was a surprise to me, and it seemed to be a surprise to a lot of people, Marvel Studios said, we're back. <laughs> because we haven't gotten, other than the shows, there's been yeah. no hint of what's going on in the movie. And right. and they, last week, dropped, a, I guess it's their, a teaser, you would call it, but it's yeah, like it's two like, or three minutes yeah. long. It's their phase four sort of compilation teaser trailer with all the footage and everything that's coming so lots of surprises i figure what we'll do is um we'll just try and play this and stop it when we want to talk about something here so uh the first thing you'll notice that that we really loved is this stanley voiceover oh yeah 
I got chills. Yeah. I'm hoping the really crappy frame rate will mm. avoid copyright issues. It's the most incredible thing in the world. What are you doing? Oh, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> that world may change and evolve. But the one thing that will never change, we're all part of one big family. Loved that. Yep. I mentioned this Lots before of, we started um, rolling. Yeah, let me pause this, because I want to bring that up while we're on group. Batman next to you. I swear he said Batman next to you. So, yeah. let's start with um, that little clip. They showed of Groot. I've always found it interesting. James Gunn is very vocal on Twitter without throwing too many spoilers. For instance, he said, everyone's wondering, he's like, oh, you're totally bringing Yondu back, right? And he's like, no, that would cheapen, oh. that would cheapen his death. Yeah. Right. He also have, has often been asked, he's like, is baby Groot slash now teenage Groot, is that just the same group. He's like, no, he said like, that group is dead. This is a whole new group with a different personality and different experiences. But the big thing this week, um, Dave Batista has been doing the rounds because he's in, uh, he's the, the star of army of the dead. Right. Um, he, uh, first off he, him and James Gunner, James Gunn made J Dave Batista a movie star. He was obviously already a wrestling star, right? So, uh, yep. in the interviews, uh, it turns out Batista had a role written for him in the Suicide Squad, the James Gunn one coming out, and he turned that down to be an Army of the Dead. For who was two he going to play one, in the uh, Suicide Squad? What's that again? Who was he going to Who was he going to play? No, no idea. They didn't. They didn't reveal that. I don't know if it was um, Croc, a character or, they just didn't no, include, or yeah, I doubt right. it was the. I feel like the Peacemaker was written for Cena. Hmm. Okay. But um yeah, he did he did he turned that down at, to be an Army of the Dead to work with Snyder and because it was a leading role and he's really been wanting to get a big time leading role. Um but the bigger news is he said after Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Batista said this, he said, I will no longer be playing Drax. He's okay. like that that's that's gonna be it for, for me playing Drax. And then James Gunn piped in and said, That's gonna be it for Drax. So okay. I expect since Gunn's just now writing the story for this, that um, actually he may not be. He's still working on that Peacemaker series. Anyway, when he gets to that, I feel like Drax is going to, I kind of hope he like has a happily ever after, <laughs> but you never know right. with James Gunn. So well, it's, it's one of the, the built in things you have to assume with these Marvel films. The success is fantastic. Actors like Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., these folks, you know, they, they make movies and movies and movies. And at some point, they're going to move on. Mm -hmm. And so as much as we would love to just keep having the same cast and the same people and over and over. And that's, I think, where they're trying to move into this, you know, phase four, introduce, um, you know, we, we spoke last week about um, Shang-Chi um, and with the, the Black Widow sort of prequel and you know a focus on other characters um i think they're gonna probably keep things very interesting as they move into the future but um you know at some point you're gonna have to bid farewell to some of these actors and some of these roles yeah i worry about some of their castings in that they got like the best person for the job for instance dr strange mm -hmm. but they also cast benedict cumberbatch and you know when they cast robert downey jr he was um that was his comeback that was kind yeah. of the second phase of his comeback. Um, mm -hmm. He was given a chance. They were able to sign him to a blockbuster deal eventually to get him to finish out his arc. Someone like Benedict Cumberbatch, he's doing Doctor Strange 2. He's already done two Avengers movies. Um, I don't know how much they have him locked up for, but he's one of those that he's one more Oscar-winning movie away from not being feasible anymore. Um Let's see. There was another. They they got uh, Angelina Jolie in the Eternals is a is a coup. <laughs> she a, uh, a coup. Yeah, she only works when she wants to. You know, she's she's done. Yeah. She she does what she finds fun, or she right. directs. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. 
So anyway, let's continue this this trailer here. This glorious thing. He's your brother. Oh. That woman over Yes, I do that every time I see your sister. Higher further faster. The chalice. That's right. We're all part of one universe. Wakanda forever. That moves ever upward and onward <laughs> to greater glory. What's that spell called? <laughs> I love these theater reaction things. Uh huh. Avengers! <laughs> yep. <laughs> the cat. I didn't it's notice a- that last time. Flurkin. It's not a cat. So now we, we finally get to these teasers for what's coming yes. for the Phase 4 stuff. <laughs> Cannot wait for this. Yeah, that looks more fun. I love what, that, that we got to look at the Taskmaster, finally, in that, the, the latest trailer for that. Yeah, so he's able to use like everybody's powers. We'll have to talk about that closer to its... Yeah. It's a song with Black Panther's claws. <laughs> yep. Oh, are they in San Francisco? That's going to be awesome. Oh, wait. Does that mean he's going to meet Ant-Man? Oh, uh, good question. That sword is killing me. Mm-hmm. We're the ones who That's such a mystery. Yes. So is that? <clears throat> That's going to be a that- hoot. Yeah. That's a mystery. Yep. This was a surprise. So that's going to be... I thought so too. Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel, and we assume Monica Rambeau. But this right here... There. It's like, where's the date? Give us the date. Yeah. (laughs) We want the date. Um, You can can tack on a, a, a Blizzard Entertainment trademarked coming soon. Oh, look, that went ahead that. and played that slide. I didn't want it to play that slide yet. But yeah, well, so, um, oh, so much. The people are already fan- fantastic, fan casting Fantastic Four. They have been since it was announced like two years ago. Um, and I'm not going to lie, fan casts are generally terrible. I have the only <laughs> one that I agree with is John, John Krasinski as uh, <laughs> Reed Richards. Um, we don't need a... I mean, to be honest, they could get the guy that did it in the original Fantastic Four movie because Reed yeah, Richards... Ian, I don't, I've never uh, pictured Reed Richards as being a young man. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's the way they draw him sometimes with the white streaks in his hair. Right. Which I think they did at one point in the... Uh, was it Universal? Was it Paramount? Who, who produced the... Um, it was Fox. That's, when, that's one of the ones they got Fox. from Fox. If it were Universal yeah. or Sony, I mean, was the, the ones that had the other. If it was Sony, we would be in the same situation we are with Spider-Man. But yeah, apparently Sony's uh, realized the um, potential, and I, I don't think that's going to be an issue going forward. And that's one of the rare examples where an actor has played two different characters in the Marvel, um, you know, sort of extended MCU, oh, Chris Evans. right? Yeah, <laughs> two big Chris characters Evans. though, and it's not like, um, yeah. Oh, the guy's name I can never pronounce. Um, who is played at least two characters in the DC universe? He played the king of the. Uh, I can't remember the name of which um, uh, kingdom in Atlantis. Um, name was the, they were the fish people, and he got killed. And he was also the. He's also Shazam, the wizard. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Um, and Juman Hunso. Juman yep. Hunso. Yep, and he's also in um, Guardians of the Galaxy. He's a a a Cree, mm-hmm. a Cree badass. Um, Ian Griffud, um is the name of the uh, who played Reed Richards in those films. I and can't see him now the, with yeah. without him picture. If you watch, like, when I watched the CW hero shows all the time 
they would continually have the commercial for this weird show where he apparently was like it immortal. Was like, yeah. And Forever. it's always like, it's a long story. And every time I see his face now, every time that, that was a great show. Really? I have to say, yeah, it's, it's a, it was a little nostalgic and a little, always worry about new. anything on CW seed. That, that it's like yeah. CW CD. It seems well, like it's like CW rejects. <laughs> No, that show originally aired on Fox, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, but pretty good show, actually. Uh, check that out. But uh, Miles Teller uh, is the actor that's been in, who's done a lot of work in recent years, who played the younger Reed Richards in the um, the two, 2015 Fantastic Four. Actually, if you ever want to be that- a big-time character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you just got to play Johnny Blaze. <laughs> Because um, <laughs> Michael B. Jordan was him in the uh, movie you're talking about, the most recent Fantastic Four. That's and right. then he became Killmonger. Um, can't say as much about Nick Cage. Um, um, the sequel, Captain Marvel 2, that is also going to um, apparently, I think we can assume from the name, feature the younger um, character, Kamala Khan, character who is, um, you know, they've, they're probably in post production at this point. The. Uh, Disney Plus show that's going to air, I think, before the end of this year, the Miss Marvel show. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm. they're filming that, if not done filming it by now. Probably. Um, I think that started filming back in like 2019 or 2020. Um, and so I'd, I'd say they're probably in post production. Um, anyway, Spider Man. That that's a film that you know several of these things you mentioned us knowing very little about. Um, the the information that has been sort of leaked, I guess, or at least released about um, actors who are going to appear in that film, and I think we're uh, presumably going to get some kind of a multiverse um, exploration Alfred, in that film as well. Alfred Molina just mm-hmm. apparently said "f the NDA" and he's definitely in it, playing Doc Ock. Yeah. Um, Andrew Garfield, Toby Andrew McGuire. Garfield, and Toby McGuire have Andrew Garfield just got through in an interview swearing up and down he has not received the call. No one believes okay. him. No one <laughs> believes him. I mean, I don't know if we'll get a version of Spider Gwen in that movie. If we're going to get like an Emma Stone, maybe no, come back be something playing her. Um, if we'll see the introduction of a Miles Morales character in that film, who knows? Honestly, I think that the one huge question that's just hanging the cliffhanger at the end of um, Spider-Man Far From Home is the fact that Mysterio is on the news and reveals his identity right. at the end of that film. Oh, and that's why uh, people are... The person uh, who scooped that... Um, Matt Murdock is in the movie played by uh Oh yeah, Charlie Cox. Charlie Cox um has been right about just about everything. As a matter of fact, he had scooped that Doctor Strange was supposed to be the um one who created the commercials in WandaVision to kind of guide her along and try and snap her out of her world, but the Kevin oh. Feige was like, No, we can't do we can't have the the white like we talked about, we can't have the white guy come in at the end and save the day. So <laughs> they took it out, but the guy's like, he knew about it. So he's also said, yeah, Charlie Cox is in Spider-Man Far From Home. So unless they cut him, but yeah, because Peter Parker going to need a lawyer now because Spider-Man may be a good guy, but what he's doing is illegal. <laughs> Being a vigilante is not legal in right anywhere in this country, I don't think. And this version of Spider-Man exists in the Civil War MCU. Right where, and and who knows that it's possible they may actually tie this in somehow. Maybe not. I don't know. You know the Wakanda Accords, um, the Civil War storyline. You know, which uh, there was a lot of deviations from the comic source material when they did the Civil War film. They tied it into the destruction of Wakanda and Age of Ultron, um, but that was a very real. You mean crisis. Sokovia. Wakanda so, destroyed. So, yeah, 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 sorry. Um, Quit trying to destroy Wakanda, so, man. What's wrong right. with you? Her, her. So uh, that was a very real crisis for Peter 
in the comics when Civil War hit, where um, he was pressured on several fronts, but mostly by Tony Stark to come forward, um, sign on to the court, right? Sign up as a, you know, an official government agent, get a paycheck, reveal your identity. But in doing so, he just doomed his family. And there was huge repercussions fall out from that um, death threats and, and several like assassination attempts. And, um, you know, people tried to kill Aunt May and hold her hostage and, and all of that stuff. So um, who knows if they'll use some element of that in the Spider-Man film where if the world does find out who he is and suddenly he gets, you know, some government agent shows up on his door and says, uh, we need to, you know, well, this could be their opportunity to, to, <clears throat> to not drop the ball on their, uh, sinister six, um, tease back in the first Spider-Man movie. Yeah, definitely. It's nice. They're bringing Spider-Man back <clears throat> to New York. The, I have a feeling that the, as I've, been distanced the the first movie is aged better with me than far from home yeah um far from home was very entertaining it was great i love how oh, yeah, they it's did a lot of mysterio fun. Just, um i don't like when you yeah. kill the big nemesis <clears throat> right my only Which... problem with tim burton's batman is they killed the joker it's like no no the joker is a continual problem for batman <laughs> That's kind of an MO for Mysterio in the comics, though. He the, dies. His ability to, you know, the, well, the, the his ability to create I- illusions and sleight of hand and, you so know. perhaps the, he's and, not and dead he's is what you're saying. Almost certainly not. Yeah, I, I would I would doubt it. Yeah, so um, let's see. Don't know too much about the Eternals other than presumably it is going to borrow very heavily from the uh, graphic novel, the sort of miniseries run, Brian Michael Bendis run there in the comics. Um, Marvel's first Oscar winning director. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, they didn't win an Oscar. She didn't win an Oscar for doing a Marvel movie. She won it for, I, yeah. I'm not, not sure. I didn't watch the Oscars this year, but now that it's their first time, they've luckily signed on an Oscar winning director. And, yeah, it looks uh, just the bits they've shown, the cinematography and the... I heard she used a lot of practical effects, like scenery. They're actually in places, like very little CGI when they could. So mm-hmm. I feel like it's going to have this very epic scope to it. It's uh, They've been saying that it's going to cover um, thousands of years. Because I guess... Yeah, well, that's... Right. 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 Um, I think we mentioned that in a previous episode, just the basic premise of that storyline is you've got these, um, they're not human, or at least they were thousands of years ago, and then they were transformed into something greater, some sort of immortal. And just what I remember from reading the story in the comics from years ago, if I'm not mistaken, the comic, the story basically opens with these seemingly normal average folks going about their normal lives. And they've all, for some reason, I don't recall why have forgotten the fact that they are these immortal sort of protectors of humanity. And they, that somehow they have to get woken up. It's like an awakening. Something has to happen. Right. So they're just one of them, I think, is like a a med school graduate, an intern, like, you know, pulling long shifts at a hospital. And one of them's a cab driver or like I think one's a documentarian, because if you saw the clip, there's a like a big camera and people were like, oops, (laughs) you can see the camera. It's like, no, I think that's part of it. I didn't think that someone pointed out that one of the characters was a. Um, So, yeah. Um, watch. Yeah, that that's just one of those. Teaser, like, I'm, I'm excited. For, I actually don't want to. Everyone's like, I can't wait for the trailer. It's like, I kind of just don't want to see anymore. I just kind of want to go into a theater because by then we'll be able to go into theaters again. As a matter of fact, I am a week and a half away from my second shot, so I'm ready to go into a movie theater again. But mostly restaurants. I want to sit at a bar, have a beer. I'm very excited for that. But yeah, then when we go in the theater, I just want to go in the theater having no idea what I'm getting other than it's some kind of super powered beings doing heroic things. <laughs> right. Well, if um, you want to 
sidestep away from the MCU very, very briefly. Um, debuted this week on Netflix, an original program, original show that Netflix produced called Jupiter's Legacy. Oh, and yeah, it, saw, it seemed, I don't know, I wasn't, it did. Watch did one it? episode, watch the first episode. And you know what they say, don't never judge a show based on the pilot, but this being a Netflix program, it's kind of, yeah, they know, film them all together. They really mean quite so much and i um, going to continue to watch and see how it turns out. But the first episode was not impressive and maybe we're just spoiled by the quality of the Marvel shows uh, on Disney plus, but the first episode did not grab my attention. That seemed to be the consensus. I generally so. don't care what critics have to say, but if the audience score is hovering around 60%, mm. that means that only 60% of the people that are into that type of thing liked it. Right. Um, like, yeah, that's, that's the way. Cause the critics, yeah. They they don't judge. They don't all want to see it. So there's some of them are going to give yeah. it a bad view. You know what is it? Like, oh, I have to watch this. Okay, I'll just watch it. I was like, no, I knew you I'd did. hate it. But the Take people it with a grain that, of salt. right? Yeah, it's like the meta score. Like the meta score. If you don't get like an A, it's really bad. Like if you get a B plus meta score, mm. that means you paid. The, they only ask the people that come out of the movie theaters what they thought of it. So if you paid money to go see a movie, then you're into that thing. And if you only give it a B, that means you pretty much didn't like it. And you're just trying to be cool. <laughs> I guess. Here's uh, one little tidbit of trivia about this um, Jupiter's legacy show. Uh, Mark Miller, right? Penned and created um, the show originally wanted it to be a film, but was advised. Um, and I don't, I don't have the source on this. I think it was a quote from an interview, James Gunn advised Mark Miller to turn it into a 40 hour series because the backstory and the history was so deep um, that you would need to really fill that in and flesh it out for the story to really. So maybe you got to watch a few that he wanted. And, and it, it's, you get this impression from the first episode of the show. It definitely has a watchman vibe to it where you get um, flashbacks back to the twenties, the thirties, the forties, um, because apparently you've got like three generations of characters in this show ah. um, that it goes way back to, you know, like um, the Great Depression. Um, so we'll see. See how it turns out. Might bring it up again. The costumes look a little. I don't know. I'll have to check it out. I still have to go back. I'm, I got to watch the um, the one on Amazon, the uh, Invincible, the in Invincible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I managed to avoid any spoilers. I know the, the, the finale, though, has tripped people out. So I'm, I'm, I'm ready for that. First, let's start with the good. Um, the Flash movie is filming, finally filming mm -hmm. Ezra Miller, directed by and Andy Muschietti, um, the same guy who did the uh, It movies. Okay. Um, they they have started filming, and we uh, got a uh, this uh, shot that keeps accidentally popping up here is... Um, and there's a zoomed in shot, but there's a, a little truck there you can see in the right hand side. And that's that's where they're filming. And it says Warner Brothers on it. That's where they're filming the Flash movie. And this is Wayne Manor. And mm -hmm. the question has been, which Wayne Manor is it? And the assumption being is that it's the Michael Keaton Batman's Wayne Manor, Bruce Wayne's Wayne Manor, because that looks like the one from the Tim Burton movie more <clears throat> Um, right. So we do know for a fact that this is going to be a flashpoint. Not, it's going to be a type of we flashpoint. I mean, Jason Momoa and Gal Gadot are not in it. So it's, and mm -hmm. 
and Michael Keaton's not playing Thomas Wayne. He's playing Bruce Wayne, an older version of Bruce or an older Bruce Wayne. And from a, it's definitely going to do multiverse stuff. Okay. Uh, because Ben Affleck is in it as well. And that's the okay. Bruce that, that this Barry Allen knows. So that's going to be end. Right. So we're going to get to see the 1989 bat suit again. Apparently they said they're not changing it too much. Nice. Cool. Um, and then they said they have an, also another new suit. Um, that's probably going to be like the, um, you know, the, uh, the future Bruce Wayne when he's become so badly, they had it in the, uh, crisis on infinite earths when they, uh, they were looking for Bruce Wayne and Kevin Conroy played uh, the old Bruce Wayne in like the, uh, the big metal exoskeleton thing. Um, oh yeah. That is, that's the same one at the Superman that, and Brandon Routh played the Superman too. And I can't remember what it's called. Um, I can't remember and from the comics. It's like this future where like in the future, uh, Lex Luthor um, blew up the daily planet and killed Lois Lane and, and Superman's the editor, or Clark's the editor in chief, and Batman's a wreck, and he's kind of gone bad. Uh, most features have Batman going bad, but anyway, so this is going to kind of have little bits of everything. I think um, there's still hope. All that needs to happen is Walter Hamada, if Walter Hamada apologizes publicly about the way he handled the, the investigation with Ray Fisher, mm. then Ray Fisher said he will come back and work and be in the flash. He just refuses to his big Ray Fisher's thing is accountability is greater than entertainment, which I agree with. So right. that's the good WB news. Um, and it and was all good news. in the beginning of the year, right? We got this, this four hour Epic, which I just finished it, a very long reviewing. I watched like the first half of it a couple of weeks ago and got real busy. And then watch the last half last night of of the Zack Snyder Justice League. Um, and several things have happened since we last talked about the movie. One, okay, Warner Brothers has done all sorts of things. First, the like the Monday after it released, an interview dropped, and Ann Sarnoff um, said that set. She's just she said we're not doing any more of this. We did it. You're welcome. Like very rudely. Huh. Wow. Then um, after that, um, they wouldn't release the numbers. And then more recently, they posted a trailer calling it the completion of the Zack Snyder trilogy. When it was okay. actually only part three of a five part story. And we all yeah. know that. Um, and then finally, as the fi there's a couple final nails in the coffin. <laughs> of people's absolute like Warner's insistence that they want nothing to do with this, despite the fact it's clear it'll make them money. Right. I mean, is there any doubt if they made justice league two? Uh, anyway. Yeah. It, which, which really speaks to the politics yeah. of this whole thing, which I think what I've heard is that for, Toby Emmerich despises Zack Snyder, like personally yeah. hates him despite all the money he's brought that. I mean, his movies are still other than, I believe Aquaman, the highest grossing, and Aquaman and the two of the Wonder Bale Woman. Batman movies, the, the oh, highest yeah, grossing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then on YouTube, Warner Brothers posts a trailer for the 4K release of Justice League, i.e. Justice League. Oh. That has, at uh, last count, I think something like 3000 likes and 123,000 dislikes. Wow. Okay. So then a day later, well, Warner it. brothers, UK, who is the United kingdom, Warner brothers, which has always been way cooler, um, posted the first 10 minutes of Zack Snyder's justice league. And that blew away the, the trailer. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, I've heard like rumors, for instance, that, HBO Max does want to continue the story, but Warner doesn't want that. Think the Warner is convinced that Zack Snyder getting to do the rest of his story will screw up their movie somehow. Even though they just did a whole thing talking about the multiverse, they wouldn't let him put the Green Lantern scene in. 
Uh, let's see what do I got here. All right, so yeah, this is um, this is Zach. Uh, I mean, you can't see it obviously; it's a little picture, but yeah. that's uh, Wayne T. Carr, who is friends with Ray Fisher and is apparently one of his uh, theater buddies from when he did theater uh, right. as John Stewart Green Lantern. And yeah. Warner said, "No, you can't have the Green Lantern," and that's who was supposed to be meeting with Bruce Wayne at the end of the movie, and that's being Not filmed in Mark Zach's Man. driveway. Mm -hmm. So they like, you can't have that. So he said, okay. And, <clears throat> and had, um, Harry Lennox film Martian Manhunter. Um, so this is rightly infuriated the fans, DC fans and Zack Snyder fans, because one, they are already mad when they finally got to see Zack Snyder's justice league. And it wasn't this, and they weren't mad because of the movie. They were mad because of, the Warner Brothers always, the rumor was always that Warner Brothers saw it and it was unwatchable. This is what they claimed, the execs, that it was unwatchable and it was dark and they just wanted, they didn't, they, the idea was is that Zack's Justice League was going to be just like Batman v Superman and continue just being dark. And then when we got this movie that wasn't dark at all, I mean, I didn't find it dark. Um, yeah, they lob an uh, Atlantean and a half at one point, but it's really, it's not, that's just violence. Um, it wasn't Batman v Superman was act two. Act two is always dark. The empire strikes back is dark. It has a sad ending. <laughs> you know, the bad guys win. Yeah. Well, uh, I mentioned this, um, the last time we talked about, um, the Zack Snyder cut that, I mean, he has his own kind of fingerprint cinematically. Um, a lot of the color and textures and and the you know the the scenes, the way he shoots a lot of this stuff, and the palette of the colors and everything. I, I, you know, that is one of the I recall complaints about Man of Steel. Yeah, but he did people that. had it's always that, it, metaphorical. It, it, in Man of Steel, oh, he's it. he's not Superman yet. Right. So everything's muted. I, I'm not agreeing with it. I'm right. simply pointing out that, uh, you know, I'm agreeing with the, this notion that um, dark is not really the word I would use. It looks like a Zack Snyder film. Yeah. Oh, and then and then just that. everything about Justice League is that one, it's but for instance, the color palette, as you were discussing in um in Batman v Superman, it, with some exceptions. For instance, when Superman, they made his suit brighter mm -hmm. because now he's Superman. Mm. Like when he's in the Capitol, it's very bright blue. Yeah. And, um, but it's still that overall, that movie has a very dark palette. But then Justice mm -hmm. League, you have these scenes, uh, Clark in the uh, field, these golden colors and the butterfly mm -hmm. and all this. They took all that out. Um, did the weird red sky thing took out what will probably arguably be the hardest flash scene to ever top in a movie, the oh, time I travel know. scene. That's just yeah. ludicrously amazing. Um, so, you know, and then it was funny without stupid jokes. It, it, <laughs> it like yeah. Aquaman. It's become a meme. Aquaman pointing at the Flash after the Flash accidentally tackles Aquaman in the fight versus Superman when he first comes back to life. Um, just regular person jokes, not, you know, falling on boob jokes, for instance. <laughs> no toilet so, humor. Or Dostoevsky, which I will admit I laugh at every time, but I probably won't see yes. that joke again. But so all that happens. And despite all of the positiveness, you know, everything from Leslie Jones doing a live Twitter um, viewing of the whole thing, which was a really fun night. I just, I, I kept what tweet after tweet is like, oh, what scene is she on now? Oh my God, I got to watch this. anything with the Amazon. She was just freaking out. Um, mm -hmm. You know, famous people tweeting, restore the Snyderverse up 1.5 million tweets on that the first time. Uh, with people that weren't even involved with that never tweeted the hashtag release the Snyder cut were tweeting it more tweets than it, when an adventures in game dropped um, all of that. And Warner brothers is silent 
won't release the numbers. So people, um, and I haven't heard much about it because they've been pissing off everyone else in other ways, but it came down to, long story short, too late, that people were like, well, I'm just going to cancel HBO Max. That'll show them. And right. I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? I didn't get HBO Max. I've had HBO since The Sopranos. And yeah. I got HBO Max with that. I love, if you love movies, yeah, you got HBO. You're right. Netflix was okay for movies for a while, and then it became kind of a TV show place. Well, I, I'll admit I was never an HBO subscriber until Game of Thrones. Yeah, they then Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, and, actually, I canceled know, for a while after The Sopranos because they just didn't have anything for a little while. Um, then I could jump back on just because I had nothing to watch. So right. I, ran a, I mm. ran a poll. And, <clears throat> and this is the result, and it is exactly what I expected. Now, I'm going to quit putting other in polls because I put other in this poll and I said, explain <laughs> in comments and not no one, one explains in the comments. person. Also Twitter edit button. Can we please soon? <laughs> Cause <laughs> we're you. But my question was, <clears throat> were you already subbed to HBO max? Did you sub for Zack Snyder's justice league specifically? Did you just have HBO already? Which meant you got HBO max. And if you look at that, uh, almost 60% already had it. Only 25% of the respondents, and I know it's not scientific, sub specifically for Justice League, for Zack Snyder's Justice League, which means if all of those people unsubbed, and this is only, you know, Snyder Cut fans probably, we're talking maybe 100,000 at most. They're, they're not, that's not, they have 43 million subscribers because it's HBO. That's not even going to, that's not even going to be something they have to budget for. <laughs> so, and, and the worst part is, is these, these are the toxic fans. It's a small percentage of the fan base, but yeah. these are the, the toxic fans that the Warner execs who are actually the toxic ones will point out. And they say we're all like that, despite the fact that the the yeah. fandom has been responsible for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars donated to the AFSP over oh, the wow. course of all of this. They're shooting for a million wow. eventually. But so yeah, I don't know what I've, else to say. It's just I, crazy just... they won't give us the rest. I'm going to stick to my assessment of the entire situation, which is that the whole thing just smacks of a lot of political spite. And I don't know if it's jealousy. I don't know if there's just lots of things that have been said behind the scenes and off of camera and not mentioned in interviews and things just going on between these people where it's, it's just a very hostile environment, clearly. And so there just seems to obviously be a lot of politicking. Yeah. And if, from everything I've heard about literally every per ever per every person that has ever worked with Zack Snyder, I guarantee you if any things were said in the background, it wasn't him because he's apparently the nicest director of all time. <laughs> <laughs> he like right. brings extras like water bottles and stuff. He like the directors walking up to people making like what I don't know that they make like a hundred bucks for being an extra or something. He brings them water and stuff. Yeah. Um, what I do think is like um, Daniel Craig is a stormtrooper. Yeah. Force a week. <laughs> what I do think is that, um, <clears throat> specifically Toby Emmerich, um, it's just white male, um, ego. They, uh, hmm. they didn't, they wanted to be, they blew, oh, I don't know, at least a hundred million dollars extra on, um, justice league and it flopped and they wanted to be right they released the snyder cut reluctantly and then took credit for it then when it's a giant hit which they somehow thought it wouldn't be they thought oh everyone will will hate this movie it's four hours long no worries then it's a giant hit and it's like they will never admit they're wrong so that's the negative thing and well, um <clears throat> Maybe if you, um, uh, there's, 
I don't remember what it was, something you said several minutes ago, it, uh, it triggered something. I, I wanted to look up and make sure I had my dates right on this. And, you know, we were talking about uh, Netflix and some of the other streaming platforms and then talking about DC and some of this extended universe stuff. I did read this not long ago. I had to go back and find the link. Um, they are adapting Neil Gaiman's Sandman Ooh. on Netflix. And yeah, that's interesting. That's not the shooting. only DC property that Netflix is <clears throat> adapting. So people have almost oh. instantly jumped on the bandwagon of like, what Netflix? Buy DC from freaking Warner Brothers yeah. and save DC because right. there is a Netflix lot is... of shit coming. I mean, they have the three biggest superheroes in all of comic books, undisputedly Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. And Superman has been in three movies in like the past 15 years. This is the biggest and superhero of them all. Two, they three had different TV or shows. Have the perfect I mean, the, Superman. Yeah, I mean, uh, CW, obviously, the DC properties that CW produces. I mean, clearly, you know, DC Comics it doesn't have any hang ups about licensing you know, the character to these different platforms. I mean, if yeah, he's that's in the Batman that they Andy's freak out about. I still surprised yeah, they showed even that? five minutes of Batman and the Titans. <laughs> well, they, they didn't really, you got Bruce Wayne. No, they the, showed the, the, the Batman fight at the end of one of them. No, oh, it was like the back of his It was head like a nightmare he was briefly. having with the, uh, yeah. Demon season one caused right. by, um, um, yeah, Raven's Raven. father. Yeah. The demon got in his head. Yeah. And it was like a nightmare, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, I got, I've, I've already forgotten the actor's name again. He was, uh, Sir Jorah in game of Thrones. I thought Ian it was Glenn. a strange choice. Yeah. Ian Glenn, it's a strange choice for Bruce Wayne, but he's, it's he's that great older actor. Bruce Wayne kind of at the end okay. of his career, Bruce Wayne. I mean, look how old uh, like, Dick is at this point. Yeah. I guess, but it was supposed to take place. Titans is supposed to take place between Dick no longer being Robin and becoming right. Nightwing. Oh, have you so caught up on that yet? Um, yes. All the way. Yes, I did. Yep. So the last thing you said that that happened already. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, we're in getting, um, I'm just pointing out that Dick isn't that old. In we're show. getting red no, hood right. next season. Oh, the kid, the kid okay. Bob is going to be Red Hood. Okay. You saw him building to that. Oh. So that's going to be cool. Yes. Um, yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, I would say. Which that arguably, I'm sorry, this is such a, an odd tangent and we're just rambling today. Sorry, folks. Well, no, it's good. I have to say that. I mean, the, we're about to wrap animated... up, but it, let's get on a more positive tangent like we were. Let's let's do that for just a bit before, yeah. before we call it so we don't end on Warner Brothers sucking. The, the animated. <laughs> A uh, Red Hood movie, the the Batman uh, DC animated films, which historically have, have always been pretty good, but the Red Hood Batman film is outstanding. It's really new, good. Yeah, well, yeah. There's a new. They've started the new universe. There's been two films. There's been the. Uh, uh, they did it with the new Fifty Two Man of. Yeah. Now they're they're done with that. Okay. Um, which yeah. had an explosive ending. <laughs> and then you, yeah. they started the new one with, I think it was Man of Tomorrow, which is really good. Still haven't it, seen that. Um, and now there's another one. There's a Batman one now. So, yeah, there's two of them now. I need to find those. Okay. I'm going to watch Invincible. Um, I'm going to try. And then uh, on the next one, we're going to we we're going to. We're going to do the last half of House of M. It's going to be an epic episode because, wow, does a lot happen. I mean, it just starts off with like where we, we start off with this. Um, I can't even fuck this brain thing. That's crazy. I'm excited for that. So we'll talk about that. Um, it's getting close to Army of Dead. Apparently that's releasing in theaters. I'm still wondering if I... Got the cojones to handle a Zack Snyder zombie movie. I'm wondering if I should go back and watch Dawn of the Dead. Have you seen Dawn of the Dead? Oh, yeah. The Zack Snyder one? The remake? The recent no. one? No, I haven't. I have to. That's his first movie. 
he did a Michael Jordan documentary before that, and then that he did Dawn of the Dead, and that gave him his start. So, huh. but Army of the Dead, if you if you haven't seen the trailer, you should watch it because it looks like it's okay. going to be a hoot. Which is funny to say because originally I wasn't going to watch it because I was thinking, well, if Zack Snyder wants to scare me, he probably can. <laughs> so, but this looks no more doubt. like an adventure <laughs> with zombies, and apparently they're not brainless. They're organized. Um, the zombies? Yeah. Yeah. They like have a hierarchy. They have like a king and queen. It looks, and there's a zombie tiger. So I don't know. I'm going to have to, I may have to be brave and watch it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, I think we can start to bring this to a close. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to finish our book club with House of M. And if you want, Maybe we can do that in a very short episode that we could drop tomorrow. Yeah, that sounds good. And well, then we'll we film it tomorrow. To get... I don't know if it'll drop the same day. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. And so, um, well, y'all know who's actually still means. listening. Yeah, um, <laughs> y'all have no for idea anyone who's still listening. Uh, we did a poll recently. As soon as we wrap up the House of M, sorry, it's taken us so long to get through the end of that. We're gonna do probably a two-parter where we're going to do the Watchmen and we're going to talk a lot about the comic, about the book. Maybe we'll um, dissect a lot of that. And then I think we'll do a second um, sort of Zack Snyder themed Watchmen episode. And we'll, we'll talk about the movie. Um, yeah. And... I want to do a good comparison because that's yeah. one of those. Uh, and we almost could have done that with the 300 except the 300 would have been easy because he almost like used the, comic as storyboards for that so yeah 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 right I mean, but uh yeah almost, and i need like to see this watchman director cut i didn't i'm not even certain i've oh. ever seen that i need to find that so yeah that's the only excuse. version that i own um and at this point it's been so long since i saw it in theater i don't even know what the differences are the footage that's included in the director's cut that was left out of the theatrical release i don't even know yeah. Um, so that'll be fun. We'll, we'll, we'll go from okay. uh, Marvel dark to <clears throat> Alan Moore dark, and it's a whole new level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I read All the right. first. I read the first page just to get a taste before I finished House of M. I was like, "Ooh, this is going to be nuts!" All right, oh, yeah. so that's um, that's it for us this week. Um, and or this week, this episode. I don't know when the net. Sometimes <laughs> we do two a week, maybe more. And if anything else pops up, we will try and 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 bring it to mm -hmm. you. So um, have Goodbye, a good camera. week.